In this beginner's tutorial, you will learn to create this motion graphic in DaVinci Resolve in only a few minutes. Let's start by clicking on the Effects panel. And under Effects, you will drag the Fusion Composition into your timeline. Then, with the playhead over the Fusion Composition, you can click on the Fusion button on the bottom. Now we are on the Fusion page. For this motion graphic, we will only need five different nodes. The first one is a background node. Then we will use a multi-match node and connect the background node to the multi-match node. The yellow color indicates that the background is a background of the multi-match. So if we have multiple backgrounds on this multi-match, the yellow one is the background and the white one is on top of the yellow one. So if we connect it to our media out and we make our first background the color green and our second background the color blue, you will see you can only see the second background. But if you switch the yellow and the white one by pressing Ctrl T on your keyboard, you see the color changed. For our motion graphic, we can delete the second background and on the first background, we will just drag the alpha down to zero. Now we have an empty background. We will start out by creating these little dots, which will increase to a text bubble. So let's get another background and connect it to the multi-merge. And let's change the color to white. Usually, if you want to create a circle, you can use the ellipse mask. But because I want to transform it later on, I won't use an ellipse mask, but a rectangle mask. I will connect it into the blue input of the background, so it will get used as a mask. And then I will change the height and the width to be a square. Now I can use the corner radius to make the square to a circle. Now let's decrease the size. Uh, you can see I have two views here and if I click on this icon, it will close the second view because you only need one view in this tutorial. So let's make the circle quite small. Let's get another node, transform node. With this node, you can change things as the position or the scaling. In our case, we will only change the position and I will position it somewhere on the left side of our screen. Then I will use this red playhead to go to the fifth frame and set a keyframe. I can do this by clicking on this rectangle on the center attribute. I will move the playhead further, maybe to frame 25 and place the circle somewhere on our screen. As you can see, another keyframe appeared automatically by changing this value. After our little circle traveled, we wanted to expand to a text message bubble. So let's click on our rectangle mask and with the playhead still on frame 25, we'll make another keyframe on the width and one on the height. Then we can move some frames forward and increase both of them. Now it's a bigger bubble, but the corners are too round for our text message bubble. So let's go back to our frame 25 and set a keyframe on the corner radius. Then you can move forward to frame 35 and change the corner radius. And I will also decrease the height a little bit to something like this. Now we need to have some content for our text message bubble. So let's get another background node and leave the color at black and get another rectangle mask. As you can see, we can't see the black background yet because we haven't merged it to our node graph. 
So let's get a multi merge node again. Drag it onto here and connect our second background to this multi merge. Now we can change this rectangle to a square. But let's make it smaller. And let's adjust the corner radius to about 0.4. But now you can see this rectangle isn't where we want it to be. We could either use this and move it here onto our text message bubble. But if we move the text message bubble, we had to adjust the position again. So we won't do this. Instead, we will use a simple trick. We will get another transform. And on the center attribute, you can right click and then connect to path one position. So now it's automatically positions it to the transform, the center of the first transform. And now we can fine tune the position of the rectangle and move it over to the left. And if we change the position on our first transform, the rectangle will move alongside. This rectangle represents like a profile pic or something. And now I want to have some text, but I don't want real text. Uh, I only want some lines which represent text. And because we also want this to be in black, we can just add another rectangle to our bottom node graph and connect it to the first rectangle. Now you can see it's still too big, but if we make it smaller, both of our rectangles are connected and appear as a mask for our background. So let's decrease the height and we can zoom in a little bit by pressing control and using our mouse wheel. Maybe change the width and position it up here. And let's round up the corners. Then I will select this and press Ctrl C, Ctrl V to copy it and connect it again. And I will move it down. I will decrease the width a little bit more. And I will press Ctrl V again and connect this too. And drag it to the bottom, adjust the width, and I will just eyeball the distance between them to something like this. And now we can add some shadow to make it look more 3D. I will press Shift Space and search for Drop Shadow, this one, and I will connect it behind the multi match. Usually, if you want to connect something, you can use these points and connect it manually. Or you could just hold down your shift key and drag this node over the line where you want it to be connected. And as you can see, now we have a drop shadow. Now, if you play back our animation, you can see the text bubble moves correctly, but our content is there from the beginning and we don't want that. We want it to be on this transform, the second one, to scale alongside this upscale. And because we can't link it to our rectangle, to our height and width, create another animation, scales from here. So click on a transform and change the size down to zero and make an animation keyframe. And then when it's fully upscaled, this doesn't need to be precise. You can move it uh, some frames back if you want. It will change the size to one. Now, if you look at the animation, it scales with it, but it's still not finished. I want to change the way it scales up and I will click on this rect these rectangles and I will start with this one and you can see on this frame it's fully upscaled 
So let's set a keyframe on the width at this frame. Now go back to the first frame it scales and decrease the width to zero. We will do this for all of these. Go to frame 40, make a keyframe on the width. Go to frame 26 and decrease it to zero. Frame 40, keyframe on the width, frame 26, scale down to zero. Frame 40. And with this rectangle, I won't just scale the width, but also the height. Keyframe on the width and the height. 26, move down both. Now you can see the scale in another way than before. And now our animation is basically finished. But before we add multiple of these, I will change some of the animation smoothness. And let's start by selecting these two transforms and go to the spline. Click on this displacement and the size. And now you can drag and select all of the keyframes and press S on your keyboard. Alternatively, you could press this button on the bottom left. Now, with the keyframe still selected, you press T on your keyboard and change the ease in and ease out values to maybe 60. And if you play back the animation, you can see it's way smoother. The same thing we will do for all rectangles. Select them, press S and change the ease in and ease out values. And now I'm happy with our text bubble. I want to duplicate them now. So select all of these nodes, move them a little bit up and press Ctrl C, Ctrl V, connect the drop shadow to the multi-match. Now go on the first transform, go to the keyframe on frames 25 and move it somewhere else. And then go to the keyframe on frame 5 and move it to the side. I will select this again, paste it again, connect it to the multi merge. And now I will click on the first background, change it to black, then on the second background, and change it to white. So now our colors have inverted, as you can see. And we will change the transform. This one I will move in somewhere in the middle. And the dot I will move here. Or maybe let's move it behind this. Then let's do a second inverted one. Connect it to the multi merge. And on the transform change the first position and change the second position. Playback the animation. It looks like this. I want to change the timing so they won't appear on at, at the same time. So let's select maybe the second one, select both transforms and all these rectangles. Go to the spline. Now you can select all of the keyframes and click on this button. Now you can use this to space things out. You can you can make the animation slower in general, or you can just move it if you adjust both points. And I will do a mix of both of them. And let's do this for another one. Select all, use this tool to change some timings. And let's do it for this one too. And basically that's our animation. You can add a background now, because if you won't, if you go back to the edit page, there will be just a black background. And you could either use this background node to be added in the beginning and change the color. 
and turn up the alpha. Then it will look like this. Or you can leave this alpha value of the background at zero. And in the edit page, you can add under generators, solid color, and use this as a background. Can change the color too. What I like to use is a good background I created in another video. And it's quite dark, you can't see it really good. So I will open it in the Fusion page and adjust the color. And now it looks like this. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. And if you want to learn more about DaVinci Resolve and the Fusion page, watch this next video. See you.